Uh, the other game last night, not quite as fun. Uh, this one, Suns, Timberwolves, Minnesota with a 2 nothing lead in that. Uh, yeah, 105-93 was the total there. Jaden McDaniels, playoff career high for 25 points, 8 rebounds. Conley and Gobert had 18 points apiece. The big three for Phoenix, that's what we want to hear. 52 points, 18 of 45, uh, with 10 turnovers. Um, they've now been held to under 100 points in both of these games. You know, I, I, Gobert's getting killed. Granted, the poll was only like 80 players, but he's getting killed. However, then you see something like this. Are we being too hard on him? Is this, what are well, we thinking? Well, yeah, yeah, that's part of the brand. Yeah, but that's <laughs> what we're saying yesterday. Is he like overrated it. at basketball? It's not, I don't think he is. I think he's just a defensive specialist that literally has made this team the number one defense. And you got to give huh. Jaden McDaniels credit as well. The way he can move his feet and he's so tall, he's long, he can guard point guards, he can front the post down low to on a big. But Rudy Gobert changes everything. He alters every shot. He anchors the paint. He's so good at help side, just kind of stunning. And gonna, he'll, you see him, he'll be in the lane and he'll cleanse on the other side just to put fear in like Kevin Durant to not go baseline. Like he's everywhere. And, and Wimby does the same thing because they're so long and they're so big. And as good as this Phoenix, Sun, Phoenix Suns big three trio could be, and they can explode every night, it's it's not a good matchup because the Timberwolves, no matter what, we know they're going to play defense every single night. Right. We know they're going to lock in. Their size, their length has really bothered. They've the established Phoenix an identity. Time. This is who they are. So the Suns, yeah, they might go off every now and then. Devin Booker is going to have 50 one of these games. Kevin Durant, they're going to all have 30, 25 points. But can they do it for seven games? Can they do it in the next? And, and you, like you think this is going seven? No, I don't. And I've been on the Suns. I've been trying to keep staying and with the Suns. Like positively. And they're consistent with what I've said. A lot of flash without the fire. I, I have, I'm yet to see this team reach its potential in, in being the team that you think they, that they are with, with so much offensive firepower, right? Like even last night in the turnovers, they literally were just picking, rolling, and throwing the ball out of bounds because of the synergy. They just they were out of they were just out of sorts. And at this point in the season, second game of the playoffs, you would figure that they have this figured out already, and they still don't. Like the Suns would almost match up better against Denver, who's not that great of a defensive team. Like this team is, it's the nightmare for them because again, with their best player Anthony Edwards, he's also setting the tone. So he's one. Of the, he's probably the best two-way player in my opinion in the NBA. Then you got guys like Jay McDaniels who's locking up, and he's also having career high in points right. it's 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 insane what they're doing so when you play that good of I mean, defense every single night oh. and you're talking <laughs> shit and you're being <laughs> physical him these guys are confident and they know because defense is defense is a, is a choice and these guys play hard every single night and they defend every single night whether shots are falling or not they're locking up in a, in a game like that last night we should give credit to mike conley where your, your primary scores they struggle a little bit but you get you get big time, you, you get a lot of production from Conley, you get a lot of production from, from McDaniels, but you also get somebody that's sturdy, that's going to anchor your basketball team on offense and defense, and at the end of the day, just be a leader out there and allow these young guys to go out and just play hard. You know, the Minnesota Timberwolves, they're looking really, really impressive right now against the Phoenix Suns. It's not going to go seven. We're, we've decided that just now. Shams, um, 93 points with the big three as part of your team just doesn't add up. What are you seeing out there? What's happening? My understanding is the Suns offense is a cause of concern internally right now. And the coaching staff, they're going to have to figure this out. If this team is going to have any chance in this series, they're already down 2-0. You look at two plays, one in the, in the first half, Yusuf Nurkic really goes ISO on Rudy Gobert, misses um, really a play where you had multiple guys potentially open on the wing for opportunities, and then later in the second half, in the fourth quarter, Drew Eubanks uh, kind of misses Kevin Durant wide open, goes for a spin move, misses badly as well. Um, those two guys shot 19 times last night. Um, they're, they're, overall, their usage rating, you look at the, the Suns' usage rating, Booker 23.9, KD 23.3, and then Drew Eubanks 22.5. So the usage rating just doesn't seem like it's in a, in a great place right now around the Suns, just figuring out structure. And uh, I think, you know, Lou talked a little bit about it is, is, you know, having a little bit of point guard play. And I think we've all spoken about, Chandler's spoken about a point guard joining this team at some point. It's kind of rearing its ugly head. You're seeing Devin Booker, Brad Beal getting picked up 94 feet, and that caused a lot of stress on guys like that who are also asked offensively to play at a high level. So this is a team to me, if you score 93 points, 
you know, you give up 105, you have usually a chance to win games. They just last night could not figure it out offensively. Let me let me let me ask you this: Is it a time now for the Phoenix Suns where they explore the idea of maybe Bradley Beal coming off the bench, and maybe and listen, bring Brad, bring Brad off the bench, pair him up with it, uh, or start him up Isaiah, with, literally start Isaiah Thomas, start any start a point him up. like put they, this team. Brad Beal, Interesting. Devin Booker, Kevin Durant. They are phenomenal scorers. They can score in an array of ways. They've always had a point guard. They've always had someone to set up. So now this year, they're some of the best scoring wings that we have in the NBA, and we're trying to turn them into point guards. Right. It's just not what they do. It's not what they've done their whole career to make them who they are. So the fact that we're this late in the season, where the, se the season's almost over for them, and they have one point guard on their roster, it's Isaiah Thomas. They just signed him two weeks ago. <laughs> right. So it's like uh, this hasn't worked all and year long. And a very long. capable point guard. At that, very. So I think. Listen, when you're down and your your offense is straight poop, like theirs has been right straight now, they poop. they have to make a change. They have to do something drastic here because what they're doing here is not working, and it's just it's iso ball. It's, it's like there's no difference than playing at LA Fitness right now, playing <laughs> taking turns, going iso. One There's no flow. There's no movement to their offense, and it's all because they don't have a setup, guys. Just three scores, and I thought initially that would work because these guys are so talented, these guys are so good, and how do you guard all of them? But the defense is just set. They all pack the paint, and if they're not shooting the ball well and they're inefficient that night, they lose. They lose bad, and that's what's happening here. It's uh, it's it's. Mind-boggling. We do have a quote, though, out of Booker. He said, quote, when things turn to shit, they kind of, we have kind of separated. Mm. Um, what do we think about that? That's a bad time to say that. That's not <laughs> the best quote that you probably want to hear. Yeah, huh. I mean, that's, you, uh, the, yeah. Just, the quote is what it is. He's basically saying when they're, they're front runners, when it's not going well, when it's everything, the shot's not falling, they're not on the same page, and, and, and they have to be. I mean, these guys are all vet guys, too. These guys are all experienced, all-star, Hall of Fame guys. So the fact that it's this point of the season, they're still not on the same page. I know they're frustrated. Yeah. I know they probably didn't expect to be down 2-0 like this, but again, <laughs> This the series are so long. I feel like when teams go up 2-0 like this, everyone's like, "Oh, it's it's over, it's over." Listen, the minute they win Game Three, then the pressure goes back to Minnesota. So fine. Man, there's still a lot yeah. of basketball. To I be think the left. Minnesota Timberwolves might have went to Phoenix last night. They're so excited after mm. hearing this quote with playing. <laughs> it's it not with, a great quote. It's not playing with so quote. much, playing with the confidence that they're playing with. Like, let's get this on. We're going to Phoenix tonight. We can't wait to play a game in Phoenix yeah. after hearing something. And like you know, that. Ant's gonna stir the pot. You know, oh yeah, he's gonna talk his shit. He oh, is. Yeah. Uh, he is fun. Shams, Grayson Allen, though, um, the right ankle situation that happened in the third. What do we have for him as the latest? When it rains, it pours. Now let's, now let's take he out already, the best shooter. He already tweaked that right ankle, and then if you look at the play where he sprained it again, it's it's a nasty sprain, and he 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 jumped and he landed, put all his weight on that ankle, that right ankle, uh, turned it pretty bad. I mean, he didn't return last night. We'll see how it feels on Friday night in Game Three, but he's going to undergo more tests today, uh, get treatment, get reevaluated. But that is a nasty ankle sprain, back-to-back -back sprains and back-to-back -back games. Uh, obviously, his status uncertain for game three. That sprain looked like a couple weeks. Like it looked that, like it's not like a just a tweak that he up. can ice that and the swelling goes down. That looked pretty bad. Um, yeah, I don't love that. The crowd, by the way, I'm loving some of these chants and some of these buildings. The crowd was <laughs> chanting "Wolves in four. Wolves in four. Wolves right. in four. Um, <laughs> okay, maybe they don't. I don't know. Sun's coming back. What are we putting? They there? better bring that guy. Like that. <laughs> they better, they better <laughs> bring that. They better guy. He's, He's on the team playing. Yeah, he he, he better be. rally. He better he better fight someone because if not. This series is going to end quickly, and, it's, it, it, and I'll be the first to say I did not see this happening. I was not a believer right. in, Oak, in Minnesota because I hadn't seen them do I it before. I tried to tell you. And you know what's scary for Phoenix is <laughs> tried to tell defense, you. defense travels, man. Defense travels. They're going to play the same defense in Phoenix. So if the Suns don't magically figure out something or have a flow of their offense or switch up the rotations or do something drastic, like we're talking, like bringing Bradby off the bench, playing Isaiah Thompson, doing something, it's going to be the same outcome. Right. It, that quote makes me feel also like that the, the morale is just so low, the Grayson Allen news. Yeah, like, yeah I don't, so they'll just fire their coach. They'll bring in someone else who didn't point. work somewhere else, and they'll try it again next year. That's a great point, Chandler. Yeah. That is the kind of analysis that we are always looking for here. <laughs>